you're not already awake, you are now. So the next song comes from Habakkuk, and I'm sure that you've all read this recently. Because we're dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. In God we trust. The dwelleth in the secret 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We bless you. Magnify the Lord, we worship you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't you lift your hands? to the Lord right now, wherever you are and however you are and whatever's going on in your life, you know that secondary, that the Lord is the one to be praised. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will be continually in my mouth. Amen. Why don't we just give him a sacrifice of praise? Say, Lord, in torrid times, you are faithful. In glorious times, you are apparent. But always, always, you are with me. Hallelujah. I will never leave you, never forsake you. That's what Jesus said. Isn't that wonderful? Why don't you turn to someone and say, be encouraged, brother, sister. God is with you. Hallelujah. God is with you. Amen. Well, Let's give uh, Peter, Paula and Mary a great hand this morning. First time and uh, good on you Julie and Ron and Caroline too. God bless you. Welcome to church this morning. Hallelujah. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And wonderful to have Pastor Anne with us this morning who is going to challenge us and stir us up. Who needs stirring up this morning? We all do, don't we? There are times when we need a real stir up. Yes, yeah, like a good Christmas pudding <laughs> with a good dose of plonk in it. Amen. So we'll have some of that, but it'll be the right kind. It'll be the Spirit of God, I'm sure. Praise God. Amen. Well, we're going to take the Lord's uh, offering right now and... Um, we're going to thank the Lord for his goodness and God has prospered us, God has kept us, God has uh, done wonderful things, provided for us all the way through. The ups and downs, the twists and turns, he abides faithful. I'm getting this thought all the time this morning that God is faithful, hallelujah. So whatever you're going through this morning, God is faithful, he'll never let you down. He can't, and uh, that's his nature. You know, we act according to our nature, and his nature is faithfulness. Hallelujah. And love. Isn't that wonderful? Father, we just bring this offering to you this morning, thankful that we're able to give. And Lord, as we do, we give in the name of Jesus and for your glory. Bless this fellowship, we pray. May it do great things for you. And Lord, we ask you just to bless each and every giver this morning in Jesus' name, knowing that you've said, give and it shall be given. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Lord, I pray that you will bless us all this morning as we give for your glory, for your honor, and for the extension of your kingdom. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Just to let you know that um, every Sunday morning, prior to the service, uh, a number of folk gather in the little room as you come through into the foyer of the building. There's a little room there, and uh, it's packed out with people praying, seeking God. And so uh, we want God's spirit to move in our midst. We want God to do great things uh, in people's lives, your lives, my life, and others as well. 
So that's every morning. Uh, come when you want to come. If you want to come real early, uh, hopefully the doors will be open. You can come and pray individually and then others will gather with you. Prayer changes things. Prayer changes me. Amen. Changes you as well. Now, Tuesday morning, we only have the one prayer meeting this uh, Tuesday because last Tuesday we had the two prayer meetings and uh, the one prayer meeting will be held here at the uh, church at 9.45 to approximately 11 o'clock. We meet at 9.45 to give glory to God, to share testimony and to thank the Lord for what he's done. And that gives great incentive and encouragement to others to pray and to believe for even more miracles in people's lives. So just the one prayer meeting this Tuesday, and then Tuesday week we'll be back at Riverway to pray over the precinct there that the Lord will move in a mighty way when stable at Riverway is on. And I trust you're geared up for that. I trust that you're ready to be a part of that. And you can already. In fact, it's important that you mobilize yourself now. We're going to hear some practical things as well as spiritual this morning from Pastor Anne. She's going to encourage, exhort, and stir us all up. Amen. Amen. Now, Wednesday. This coming Wednesday, 7.30 in the evening, as I understand it, we're going to be live streaming our Bible study. And what do I understand? Well, I understand that we're going to have a departure from the uh, themes that we've had over the last six weeks, which has been the church in the end times and what's happening in the world and, and bringing a biblical, uh, um, I suppose, answer to the queries that thousands, millions are asking. What in the world is happening? That's what people are asking. And, of course, the Bible is not silent. The Bible is very, very eloquent and profound and prophetic. And we've been looking at that. But I want to talk about, possibly it links in with that theme, about the huge need that we have in this land and indeed Western countries, perhaps throughout the whole world. And what is that need? The need to deal with, to minister to those that are so afflicted with depression. Now, depression has become very apparent down in Victoria and Melbourne because of over 200 days of lockdown. Just coming out of that, and you can see the jubilation on the streets, uh, in the cafes, in the pubs, in the streets itself, people just excited. There have been terrible, terrible statistics coming out of both Victoria, out of Melbourne, country Victoria, and New South Wales and Sydney of those that have taken their lives. And they're not only the elderly, the infirm, and those that are accustomed to depression, but children and youth. And you know, the Bible talks about in the last days there will be terrible anxiety. Terrible anxiety. What is anxiety? It's a problem without a solution. That's what anxiety is. You know, anxiety is when you've got a problem, but you don't know what to do to alleviate that problem or give yourself an answer. And so people can't see a way out. Now, you know, and I know, and we're almost to the point of being glib about it, and we shouldn't be, that Jesus is the answer. Amen. We know that Jesus said, I, I have come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus said that. He said, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. What's the difference between the peace the world gives? The peace of the world is dependent on circumstances being under control. But what if the circumstances are out of control? That's when you get anxiety. And uh, Matthew's Gospel, and Luke in particular, talks about a time when men's hearts will fail for fear 
And that is they'll give up. They'll just collapse inwardly. And men are being seen as one of the worst uh, groups of people, middle-aged men and young men, young boys, teenagers, who are taking their lives. And so we know that. And, uh, well, what's the answer? What's the answer? What is the root of depression? We know there are all kinds of depressions. Some are physically uh, something that happens, an absence of something within the brain or within the body, and we call that clinical depression. We're not going to touch on that because that's for medicos to talk about. But uh, what about ordinary depression? Well, we're going to talk about that on Wednesday from the Scriptures, and uh, we will define it and we will also realise how to take it on and overcome it. And you can overcome those mood swings. You can overcome that feeling of, of depletion, that feeling of depression, that feeling of being disconsolate. Uh, you can rise up and take an authority over those moods that would otherwise control you. But we want a biblical foundation. We don't just want, uh, you know, someone telling us in a sort of um, cheesy grin way where we're, oh, you'll be all right. No, no, people aren't all right. And this is a, a very real problem. People are distorted in their outlook. They are distorted in their thinking. And so that's our theme on Wednesday night. Logos is on today after the meeting in the multi-purpose room. Safe Haven Youth will be on the 6th of November and that will be the third in the Bible study series, Who's Jesus? Well, you can't get to know him fully unless you know all about him. That sort of fills in the blanks and that's what that Bible study will do. Now, next Saturday... We're going to meet at 9.30 at Rossiter Park for a barbecue and a time of testimony. Who's meeting? The men are meeting. And they're going to have some fellowship together. And so um, send your men off, girls, with a lovely little kiss and a pat on the head. And make sure they've got a folding chair. If they uh, can, bring a friend or a son or whatever, a neighbor, uh, none of you would have enemies. So, But if you do, if you do, uh, bring them too. Bring $5, that helps cover expenses. And you'll see uh, the group there under the rotunda at Rossiter Park. And if you need to know any other information, see Jamie. Jamie has all the answers. He knows everything. Helen tells him, and that's why he knows everything. Is that right? Something like that, isn't it? So it's next Saturday, this coming Saturday. Boy, did we have a great Golden Years meeting on Wednesday. Had a great crowd, a great food, and a wonderful testimony from Naughty Tay. But Tay's improving, not only in spirit and temperament and behaviour, but he's improving in his health, and we praise God for that too. Amen. So the doctors know what his problem's been and are treating him right, and he's looking even beyond that to the Lord, and God is blessing him. Now, the 27th of October is coming up. It's Wednesday night, and uh, we've got the launch at the Salvation Army on Beck Road at 7.30 and you're all invited, every one of you, to hear what's going to happen at Stable at Riverway. Stable on the streets and uh, it's going to be just a wonderful time. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. And some of our uh, group are in other churches this morning, uh, pastors, uh, Lapani and Fifi and others are down at other churches announcing what's going to happen and encouraging the churches. You know, the church is, is a sleeping giant. It's a giant and it doesn't realise it is. 
And so many people are just, you know, and that is not groanings that cannot be utter. That's just uh, an unhealthy snore of indifference and indolence, and we need to crack the whip in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And that's what prophets do. They crack the whip in Jesus' name, and we need to be doing what Jesus said to his, to his parents. Remember, when he was 12 years old, he had the vision. He said to his parents, didn't you realize that I would be about my father's business? My motivation, my absolute focus is to please fulfill and to do to the nth degree what father decrees. Mm. So that's what prophets do. That's what our Lord Jesus did. And that's the pattern. And so, you know, I don't care what age you are. Don't you listen to those that say, oh, you've had your day. We haven't had our day yet. That's coming. It's going to get better. Hallelujah. Amen. I am determined. I've made up my mind, says the chorus. I'll serve the Lord. Amen. So praise God. So what if you can't hear a little bit? Uh, well, maybe you've lost your hearing a little bit. Well, thank God for that. You don't have to listen to all the rubbish that goes around. Maybe you're a little bit short-sighted. Thank God for that. You only see what God wants you to see. And when you're old, you can almost say what you like. You can almost say what you like when you're old because people say, oh, well, you know, it's grandma. <laughs> you know, but I tell you what, speak up. Speak out, look ahead. And Jesus said, lift up your eyes and look upon the fields. They are already white unto harvest. They're right now. Hallelujah. There are people in this meeting this morning that have been harvested in the last few weeks. And praise God for that. And I know, Doreen, you gave your heart to the Lord last Sunday because Eunice was passing through Willows and saw Doreen, kept going, and then the Holy Spirit said, go back and speak to that lady. She did. Doreen's been in church just about every Sunday, and last week gave her heart to Jesus. Why don't you give the Lord a hand and, and Doreen some encouragement. She belongs to the family of God. So do, do come on Wednesday. You say, well, look, how can I be uh, in the Bible study on such an um, august theme and, uh, and yet be in the launch over at the Salvation Army. I'm not God, I'm not omnipresent. No, but we've taken into account that and we'll pre-record the Bible study. It'll go up online on Wednesday at the usual time and you can visit that in, at your leisure, either uh, on uh, Facebook or you can uh, look at it uh, on YouTube the next day or even that same night. So there we are. All right then, dear friends, I know that you can't wait to come around the Lord's table and our brother Neville's going to come and bless us. Let's give him some encouragement. If you heard his testimony at the last men's fellowship, it was brilliant. Welcome. Amen. And God bless you. It's all yours. God bless you too. Good morning, church. Good morning. Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Um, thank you for the beautiful singing this morning. Yes. That's just favorite, uh, favorite words that came alive to me this morning, Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Thank you. Hallelujah. As we prepare ourselves, brothers and sisters, this morning to come before the Lord's table, I just want to share this with you all this morning. John the Baptist calls Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29. Jesus came into the world knowing that it would cost him. And he explains that Salvation comes through the 
through his death on the cross as the perfect and sufficient sacrifice for our sins. He bore in his pure being the fullness of sin, that God might forgive sinners and make them pure. And the prize of Christ's bearing those sins was death. The gates of salvation are open wide to all who accept his salvation and his invitation to enter by faith. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, communion this morning is a time to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. The bread and the wine are tangible, physical reminders of Christ's love for us. Every time we eat and every time we drink, it is a reminder of the sacrifice of Christ. Just as we depend on food and drink to survive physically, we can only live spiritually through Jesus Christ because of his sacrifice, his ultimate sacrifice on that cross of Calvary. At the same time, communion is also a time to examine ourselves and our walk with God. As instructed in 1 Corinthians 11.27, Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will, will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. Church, it is time to do a heart check. It is time to do a temperature, temperature check on our bodies. Are we walking out our faith and living in an active relationship with Jesus, allowing the Holy Spirit to move in our lives and to sanctify us? Or are we living life according to our choices and only partaking in communion ritualistically or just as a matter of ritual? It's all about communion. It's all about communion and fellowship with God. As we come to the Lord's table, we remember his word in Luke chapter 22, verse 19 to 20. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us partake. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. Let us drink. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace and your throne of mercy, and we thank you, Lord, we thank you that we are able to come freely before your table. Your table that you have blessed again this morning. Thank you, Jesus. This we pray. Amen.
we stand and sing it together. Let's worship him.
worship you in spirit and in truth. We worship you. We worship you in spirit and in truth. We worship you. We worship you. There are many people all over the world that are watching this live streaming of our fellowship this morning and prayer and praise. And there are those that are feeling desperate and desolate and very much alone. And they don't know where to turn because where they've turned before has never been enough. Never enough to heal the wounds or bring the peace that they need. But I want to tell you that Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the one. Oh, he's the only one. Let him have his way until the day is done. Every living day, let him have his way. Jesus is all I need. Lift your hands for those you don't know that need him. He is all I need. He is all. thank you for your presence in our lives. There are many things we don't understand. We can't even take them in. Things that have happened to us, things that have been dealt like death blows to our very person. But you've been there. The separation from loved ones we've loved and enjoyed and known and trusted. And then suddenly... You've called them home, or death has taken them. Father, you're the only one that can fill the void. You're the only one that can heal the heart. You're the only one, Lord. You're the only one. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. All things are Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. All things are possible. Lord, I will just sing this once or twice at the most. If you've got a need this morning, lift your hand to the Lord and we'll pray for you at the end. Holy believe, holy believe, all things are possible. Holy believe.
receive you the Holy Ghost. Receive the quickening of the Spirit. Receive the presence of God. Receive the healing you need. Receive the peace that passes all understanding. Receive the confidence in the time of the storm. Receive the joy of the Lord which becomes your strength. Receive him, receive him. Oh, Jesus, come. Oh, Jesus, come. Oh, Jesus, come and fill every longing heart. Lift the spirit that's bowed down, broken with disappointment. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. Jesus Christ, O Kalabashanda, Isa Kapabasi, every knee someone receiving a miracle right now in their body, hallelujah their body is coming alive hallelujah, in the name of Jesus hallelujah I exhort I Father, we think of that young couple that have undergone crucial treatment in Brisbane, and we ask you in the name of Jesus that a miracle will take place in their lives. We pray for countless others all around the world that need you in a very real way. We pray for the church in Afghanistan at this time, that you'll protect it and Blessed Iran, too, with all that's going on there right at this moment. We pray that you'll bless your servant as she comes to speak and to share and to exhort and help us to hear the voice of the Spirit, what you're saying to the church in Jesus' name. All the people said, God bless Pastor Ann. Give her a hand right now. Amen. I just talk. <laughs> How to come on after that, isn't it beautiful? Just um, keep in his presence, guys. Uh, you learn a lot about the spirit and he doesn't, now that Tony stopped playing, he doesn't stop ministering in your life. Like that miracle can keep happening. That miracle might be tomorrow morning when you wake up and you're well, I can move my arm again. So just keep being open. It doesn't stop. Uh, I think once I thought, oh, I prayed for, oh, I missed the prayer. But no, just God's, God's bigger than that. 
Uh, so Tony's asked me to preach, to talk about Stable on the Strand today. Um, and I go, oh, yeah, thanks, Tony. I, that's me, that's my heart, that's my passion, my calling. Oh, but sometimes I feel like I'm a squeaky door. <laughs> Here she goes again. Uh, and so everything that I want to say about Stable... Um, I want to say that you guys, every one of you individually, is far more important than stable. <laughs> you know, like we can have all sorts of programs, but you are more important than any program. God's love for you. And I'd love you all to be involved in stable, every one of you. It's, it's so exciting. But I can't make you. It's, God just loves you and, and he wants the very best for you and... We exhort you because we think this is going to be part of the very best for you. But God knows you and he loves you. And I don't want to run a rough, rough shot. Here I am talking about stable and there's huge grief going on in your life or whatever. Let just God minister into all that today. Um, but here goes the squeaky door. Uh, and uh, well, Tony actually said that the church is a sleeping giant. When we, I might have, uh, some of this stuff I might have told you before, when we, when we first started going to the Strand, the, the words that God used was that the church was a fat lady in a chair and we had to get her out of the chair, which is, <laughs> I think the sleeping giant's probably a better picture, but... <laughs> There's a fat lady in the chair, and and that's why I get that's why I go on about the stable because I, God's told me to get the fat lady out of the chair, um, and in my prayers I let set fire to that chair and I put a big fire underneath the chair and I break the legs of the chair and I do everything to get that fat lady out of the chair, um, which only God can do. <laughs> um, so how did I get involved in Stable on the Strand? And I think the first thing I want to say is I, I gave it a go. That sounds funny, but I was involved in local ministry. I love local ministry. Um, I'd been involved in it for 12 years. Uh, I loved seeing things grow. I loved working with people. I loved programs. And uh, just so involved like so many people are in churches. And then, and this was in Toowoomba, and then there was an event there called Christmas the Full Story. Is anyone, would anyone ever go to that when that was on? Christmas the Full Story in Toowoomba? So it, it was it's similar to Stable. That's what Stable's based on. But it did the full story. So it went right through to the resurrection. And it went right from the 1st of December right through to Christmas. And every night. And it was just crazy. And thousands, we had thousands of people came. Um, and... So I got involved in that because someone asked me to and something ignited in my heart. <laughs> and that's why I, I, I encourage people because I hope that same sort of ignition might happen in your heart. And I know it has. There's people here that, that have been ignited by Stable and that's um, fabulous. So when I was called to leave Toowoomba and come up here, um, I was going to miss the people and the church that I'd been so much part of but the big thing was, oh, I'm going to miss Christmas, the full story. Like, God had just put it so much in me. And so that enabled me up here to, um, with the help of the daycare then, in Mount Louisa, to um, establish, um, we'll start the story of Stable. Um, but in doing that, he placed something on my heart. Because Christmas, the full story was not a church event. It was a combined churches event. And I began to see then the importance and the power of working together. And um, so when I came to Toowoomba, to Townsville, everything in my heart, and I came to a very broken church that had very few people with a big facility, everything in my heart wanted to build that church. Every minister wants to build their church. Every minister wants big numbers. Every minister wants good finances, believe it or not. See, they're measurable things, see. So, dear, we all want that. But it's such a temptation. And I felt that what God wanted me to do 
was not build a church, but to build his kingdom. And there's a big difference. And yet that is highly radical statement in church world. To build his kingdom and not to just build a church. Um, Matthew 6, we sang it today. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Matthew 16, and I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. We seek his kingdom, God will build his church. What does it look like to build the kingdom of God? <laughs> I, I don't know yet, and even though I've been do, trying to do it for whatever, 20 years, but it's, I think it's creating a place in the city, and even bigger than the city if you're in a bigger space than that, where the, the presence of God can dwell. And what is the presence of God? Well, it's all that God is, his love, his joy, his peace, the fruits of the Spirit, a place where all that happens. So every time in the city where you see those good things happening, in a sense, his kingdom's being built. And when you see the opposite happening, that's areas where the light of his kingdom has to shine. And so in doing stable, there's a sense where we're creating a place where people can come and encounter the kingdom of God and his presence. And that's what we're doing with our prayers on the Tuesday nights. So, you know, come along. You might come along and go, oh, that didn't work for me. It's actually not about you. Come along and help build his kingdom. Build a tabernacle down there. Build a place where God will dwell. We're, we're, we're expectant for that. But it's not going to happen unless we get people down there Believing for that and declaring that and praying that and going down during the week and, and praying over that space. We've got to prepare the ground. That's what I learned from the Sherberg ladies. What a magnificent job you guys did. And I learned from it that we've got to prepare the ground. We can't just go in there on the 18th and expect everything. We've got to prepare the ground. And that's what we need people to help us uh, the church of Townsville. Interesting, Tony refer referred to the church in Afghanistan. He didn't speak about a denomination. He talked about the church. So here we are, the church at Townsville. You guys are part of it. And together we have to prepare the ground. Um, okay, so, so it's doing, doing church. The second thing is it's doing church together. Um, it's unity. But unity is not me getting an idea and saying, come along, come along, come along. <laughs> and, oh, I had a great thing. Unity is a shared vision. And, and so with Stable, we've had to work really hard at um, not just come along and do this because I want you to, but that you've got the vision for Stable too, that you can see its potential. And then we work together on it. And to be honest, God has done the most incredible miracle there to bring 60 churches on board with a common vision at Christmas. And that is, that is extraordinary. And we don't know what we've got here in this city in terms of unity. Um, we, we just take it for granted. But you go somewhere else, and people come here and they go, goodness gracious, there's a unity here that isn't in other places. And we've just absorbed it over the last 20 years. But that's a miracle of God. It truly is a miracle of God. Um, so even when I had my, chur my church at Mount Louisa, my place there, and here I am wanting to do stable, but I had all these people I had to minister to, I felt God said, just take them with you. Just take them with you as a leader. So I gave... We closed down all other Christmas programs. I think we still had Christmas morning. But, and we just, we just did this together. You can't do everything. You've got to work out what you're going to do. And that, that was just critical for us. Um, and it just excites me today that I, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I mean, I am a driver of Stable, but there are many people who drive Stable because people have the vision of it. I'm not the only one talking about it. There's people talking about it 
all over the place. And unity, working together, is the heart of God. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, united. Psalm 133, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It blesses God's heart. 1 Corinthians 12, 12, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. Different parts, one body, the body of Christ. This delights God. There is something that happens when you do things together. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, and once it left the Strand, it, was, it left Mount Louise. It was far bigger than, than Mount Louise. We, we couldn't do what, what was required of it. The, the budget went from $2,000 to 100000 the first year. It's like we, we just didn't have the capacity. So we went, I went to the ministers who were meeting for prayer and just said to them, you guys want to take, take responsibility for this? And so it became um, a citywide event. Um, but we had to let go of it. And I remember one person not very happy at all about us letting go of it. And again, in church world, you don't actually give stuff away, even though it's sort of the gospel. You don't actually do it often because <laughs> this is our event and we're building our church. But we gave it away. And I think there was power in giving it away, in losing that control. Um, you know, the disciples were called to leave everything to follow Jesus. Uh, today we sang, I surrender all. It, it, we've, got to, we've got to let everything go. Abraham was called to go from the, your country, your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. He took his son Isaac to Mount Moriah to, to sacrifice him. I mean, to get your head around what that would have been like. But he did it for God, letting things go. So God can do what he wants to do. There's something powerful when we let go. Let go of possessions. Let go of finances. Let go of family. Let go of friends. It's painful, but it's powerful. And it's freeing. And it's the heart of the gospel to give and to let go because God gave his son <laughs> that we might have life. Powerful and freeing. So while I'm talking about stable, God might be speaking to you about something that you need to actually let go of. And I think partly because of the unity thing, I don't know, but because of stable, in, you know, not because of stable, in stable, I see God move more than anywhere else in my entire ministry. Miracle after miracle. Um, someone... Uh, I, Where's Abilio gone? Abilio, you were going to get me a white board. Is that possible, please? Sorry. Thank you very much. You are amazing, Abilio, because you just do whatever we ask you to do. The poor guy. Thank you, Abilio. <laughs> but I mean it when I say we see miracle after miracle after miracle at um, Stable. Miracles in equipment, miracles in finances, Miracles in volunteers. It's only for a really little thing I want to do here, but thank you. Thank you, Avelio. That's great. That's great. Um, I remember early on, we, we wanted some bricks. And we had run around to try and find this certain kind of brick. And we couldn't find it anywhere. And, you know, so what are we going to do? The lady I actually, the first day, was she goes to a church, but probably, you know, has a different, is in a different place to me faith-wise. I don't even think she was going to a church at that stage. So it's interesting, people could come to churches after stable. Um, and she, uh, anyway, one day I went for a walk around Mount Louisa. I walked up the hill and there in front of a house was this load of bricks, exactly what we wanted. And on top of the bricks was written this. No, it was written that. Can you believe it? This is, this is, this is a kilometre away from the church, in the middle of a road, these pile of bricks with stable written on them. And I go, can you see? Can you see? 
Can you see? So I say, God, God, thank you. These are the bricks we want. God, but how do I get these bricks, these big pallet of bricks, from there to the church? So I raced down, so excited, to- told the lady who was doing that, and she said, I'll go and knock on the door. So she went up, knocked on the door, and of course they lent us the bricks. So why did it have stable written on it? I, look, I have no idea, except that the address was five Tablelands Court. That's all I can say. God is amazing. This is why I love it. I go, God, I don't believe it. And I just think they'd abbreviated it. <laughs> and we got our bricks. Um, all right, so I, I bought this. <laughs> yeah, 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 the S was a five, I think. <laughs> I, I bought this um, unit once uh, and the developer... Um, I didn't know him, but but other people knew him. And apparently they put the wrong... When they were building it, they put the wrong kitchen in the unit. So so, uh, I I actually got a call from the developer, which is very unusual. And he said, Anne, I I want to come and... I want to apologise. Would you like to come in and see me? I said, yeah, I'd love to. So I went in and he said, look, I'm just sorry. We've put the the wrong kitchen in your unit. I couldn't have cared less, to be honest. I was going to rent it. I didn't really mind. Um, okay, all right, you know, that's fine. Don't worry. It's all okay. He says, Anne, is there anything I can do for you? That's probably a pretty stupid thing to say. I said, well, I said, I need $15,000 for stable. <laughs> I got 14000 that day, 10 from him and four from his mates. Like, this is the miracle... Well, what developer rings you to apologise for putting in the wrong kitchen or whatever it was, bathroom, kitchen, I think? Like, God, it's just amazing. I see miracle after miracle. I can't... It cost us $200,000 to put on stable. And so that's... We've got to believe for that every year. So it's not like, oh, well, we're 20000 under this year. I'll just throw it in. <laughs> no one can just throw in $20,000, you know. We've got to believe God for every cent of that that money. And that's what's so exciting. And then, so that's, you know, equipment, finances, volunteers. Over and over again, the skilled people come up and we go, you're an answer to prayer. You're amazing. The guys are putting up scaffolding. Um, They were very confused on it. Uh, Don't do it regularly. I think ticketed, but not very common at it. This guy's walking down the strand. He says, what's going on here? And we told him and he said, I'm a scaffolder, you know. Did it in about 10 seconds flat. Like, this is what God does. That's why I love being part of it, just watching the miracles happen. Um, and, and in that, you know, my faith has really been built and I've learned so much more to trust God. You know, we say we trust God, but we actually pray often in fear and we pray in panic. But no, I just, I'm learning to trust God. Um, there's so much can go wrong. The weather, like, we have, we have lost two hours in 20 years in, to, in Townsville in summer. That's God. How many times has the carols been cancelled? But we don't get cancelled. It's just amazing. Um, the finances, the resources, uh, it's just trusting God. It's amazing. And, you know, sometimes when you can get a little bit negative about it, God said to me, it's another word for you guys, don't look at what's not happening, look at what is happening. And go, oh, why why, why isn't that happening? Don't, stop it, look at what is happening. And that's just been a real blessing and a real blessing for me when people start to gripe about something or just look at what is happening, don't look at what's not happening. Um... But, you know, they're, they're some of the big things, but I guess there's, you know, there's lots of other little things. There's um, conversions that take place. Uh, a lady came along. She had been part of a church in her earlier years, um, but she got into really difficult situations and, in fact, had, to, had gone into prostitution to um, keep herself 
you know, to have finances. Uh, someone asks her to be involved in stable. Out of stable, she gets involved in a church, in the church, and um, she's moved out of town now, but still very involved in the church. You know, God shifted her. Um, and it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. She came back to Jesus. Um, there's, there's people healed. I've seen people come with wounds on their legs. No one's prayed anything, but they've left with them healed. Because we're in the presence of God, we're creating this tabernacle, this kingdom, part of the kingdom of God. Lonely people come and they go, I didn't know what I was going to do this Christmas. This has made my Christmas. I was even talking to someone the other day who said, my family is so dysfunctional. I hate Christmas, but I just love stable. Stable is my Christmas. Um, we've had people come to the Christmas blessing area and go, oh, good, you're here. We've waited all year to come back for another blessing. Like, what, what, what do they think the church is for? But anyway, they've waited all year. And then they've brought their families with them. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, you know, it's built a family of Christians across the city. That's a powerful fabric. That denom denominational walls breaking down, church walls breaking down, and this powerful fabric of Christians that know each other in all the churches. Uh, that, as a result of that, have established some amazing combined church ministries, um, the Walk of Witness. It's all shifting at the moment, actually. Street chaplains glo with COVID, Global Leadership Summit, Neighbour to Neighbour, some amazing ministries in that, citywide ministries. Um, so God has used it far more than we can even think or imagine. <laughs> so there's some of the reasons why I do it. So those of you who are involved in Stable, a couple of you here, Margaret and Jen and Tony... I'm going to ask, or just tell me quickly, why do you do it? One sentence, Tony, one sentence. Why are you involved in stable? I have never seen him stuck for words in all my life. I will go over the other. You just think about it there, Tony. That's okay. I'll just go over here and ask these people. I'll be back. I'll be back. Margaret, one sentence. There's probably lots of reasons. Give us one. Just to love onto others in the community. A chance to love people. Yeah, right. Um, our motto is... Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I'm stuck here now. Um, our motto is by our love. So, yeah, <laughs> Jen. Very similar. Uh, God just showed me that the whole city needs a big hug and we've got a big church that can give them a big hug. Yeah, great, great. And that's the way, thanks, Jen. That, pray about it and see what God says. And that's the sort of stuff you'll get. Tony, uh, do you want me to come over to you? Or how, how are you going, dear? <laughs> it's bringing God to people. Bringing God to people, yeah. You know. uh, reaching families. Reaching families, yes. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. Yes, yes, that's great. That's great. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the restriction I put on you, wasn't it, Tony? It was very hard. <laughs> so there's many reasons why people get involved. Um, but but I, I, I would love you just to at least pray about it and get God's heart for the city and see whether he wants you, where he wants you to fit. Um, but there was a, a scripture I really wanted to, so I was sort of preparing, kept coming today. It's Matthew 14. And I don't want to say a lot about it, but there's just a little bit that I want to say. Very common scripture. Jesus walking on the water, verse 22. I'll just give you a moment if you want to open up. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. Oh, it's a ghost, they said cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, 
Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And then they climbed into the boat. The wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. So just the middle verses there, verse 28. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. And Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. Why did Peter do that? What, what, what motivated Peter to do that? What do you think? I'm just interested in thoughts on that. Trust? He trusted? He, he knew it was Jesus? He, he knew he could trust him? Yes. He jumped out of the boat. He wanted to be like Jesus, yeah. He, he was enthusiastic. He was impulsive. <laughs> so he didn't really think too much about it. Any other thoughts? He wanted to hug him, yes, yes, yep. And then what happens, and this is what a lot of people dwell on, but he saw the wind and he was afraid... And he began to sink and he cried out to God. And everyone goes, oh, Peter, yeah, but aren't we like that? Aren't we like that? How often do we, do we start with such excitement and then slowly it just sort of <laughs> gets whittled away and we lose that zeal we first had for something? But I love it. So I don't want to dwell on that because we're all like that. But what I want to, want to look at is... Um, uh, uh, let me go. Da, 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 da. In verse 31, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. <laughs> Jesus reached out to him. Jesus is there to pick us up. Even when we take those steps with such enthusiasm and we falter, Jesus is always there. He will not let us fall. He will not let us fall. And that's, what, that's the thing I want to say about this. He, he's there to pick us up. He's always there. He never lets us down. Never lets us down. I'm learning so much about faith with this sort of thing. Never lets us down. Now, I don't know what you think. Has he let you, you know, oh, he's let me down there. Look at what he is doing. Don't look at what he's not doing. And he's there picking you up. He's never let, he'll never let you down. Even when you start to falter and fall. And, you know, I don't know. I think sometimes we've got to maybe just jump out of that boat a little bit more, be a little bit more bolder, say yes to a few more things. And then when we get a bit nervous, just know Jesus will never let us down. He'll never let us down. He'll be there. Grab us by the hand. Pick us up. He might have a word of rebuke like he did to Peter, but he'll still put us back in the boat. You know, as you step out for God, if some of you as you pray and just say, God, what is it for stable for me? You know, you're an answer to prayer for some people. Some of the leaders, you come beside some of those leaders, they'll be so excited for you to be part of what they're doing. Um, and I know several times in my life I've said, I can remember, I've said, I, I can't do this, I can't do this. But God's never let me down. He's never let me down. And when you feel nervous, when you want to say, I can't, just watch what God does and see the amazing stories of his faithfulness. Has, any, has anyone been part of a move of God? You know, real revival meetings, some of you? Yeah? Yeah. It's exciting, isn't it? And, you know, again, churches pray, oh, you know, bring the revival. I don't think when it really comes, it's going to come to one church. It's going to sweep a whole city, and a nation like Wales, or an area, a region. 
Every church that's ready is going to get caught up in it. But, you know, going to stable, I think, gives me a touch of what that might look like. There's, there's an excitement, there's a momentum, there's a motivation, there's an enthusiasm, there's something moving, there's something happening that we can get part of and, and get the momentum of what God is doing in this city. Okay, what's happening this year? I've got a map here for you. Uh, so, streets, everyone here, you've got a chance to do something in your place. Whatever you like, put up a star. Please do something. Please do something. If you're in the units, put it up in your front door. I don't care. Let's just make that declaration. Let's be lights everywhere we go. Um, stable on Riverway. This is a little map of Riverway. Um, so some of you will be familiar with this. This is Riverway Drive. You come in this way. Uh, you walk up. You walk up here, and um, and come up to the pools that are here. You oriented? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the next slide, thanks, is black. No, there we go. Um, and this shows you what will be in the different areas. So as you come up here, this is the main stage area with the stage here. There'll be a youth area. The prayer areas will be in the... They'll, they'll come out probably from there, but they'll start in the rooms upstairs there. Food will be around the edge here. This is Rain Tree Grove. Um, and right along here, not the town of Bethlehem, but the Christmas stories, a walkway that um, you walk along. Just leave that on um, for a moment. Um, and so, look... Or there's jobs for everyone. You might go, oh, I don't want to be a soldier. I don't want to be involved in stable. That's one job of hundreds of jobs that we have and things that have to be done. And I think there's a job from everyone from about a day-old baby, which we've had, I think 23 hours, um, through to people in their 90s. There's a job for everyone. There's people with disabilities who even cut stuff up for us and do stuff in preparation. It's not only the event, there's even a lot of stuff now that's going on that you might go, oh, well, I've got time even now to help. Um, that would be great and that could really help us in our preparation. A um, few people aren't here today. Naomi, Naomi's in charge of the buses. So the buses are going to run along Riverway Drive um, and stop. have at least three stops, there might be more, where there will be a sausage sizzle going on to bring people from the community have the sausage sizzle and they can hop on the bus. She needs bus shepherds to just go up and down with the buses. She needs people to help run those um, sausage sizzles. That might be something you might say you'd like to do. Uh, the youth will be looking for people, and it's not just young people. We actually need some older people there to supervise activities, do activities. Um, the main stage will need people, be, um, tech, people behind the scenes there who like to help with um, stage management and that sort of thing. Um, Rain Tree Grove, Chen's looking after Rain Tree Grove. Do you want to say quickly some of the areas? So, it's a bit unprepared, but you can maybe the sorts of things you would need help for. Uh, we've got tables and chairs for people to come and eat food that they've purchased or bought. So we need people on the team sort of wiping tables and chatting to people. We've got storytelling, so we've already got a few volunteers in the storytelling space, but we're welcoming more and people who can help the kids find where the storytelling is. We've got a small stage, so we need people to be looking after that stage, and Abilio is doing an awesome job helping bring that together. Uh, we've got um, a, a body painting, which is a bit of fun for the kids. We've got some weaving and craft activities. We have a fabulous gratitude tree which is actually going to be a gratitude grove so catholic education have sponsored that we're going to have uh, at least 20 schools will be decorating some small trees uh, and then we have um, ornaments for people to write on or draw on to say what are they grateful for hang it on the tree so we'll have a grove of trees that are just giving thanks to god basically and we also have um, prayer stars so Oh, yes, the Garden of Hope. So the Garden of Hope is going to be stars where people write things, their prayer requests, what are they hopeful for. So we need people to help um, with uh, people finding the right equipment to be able to write. We need people on those tables to sanitise, to wipe down 
the pens and the textures and things between people using them. So there's lots of different jobs engaging with the community in that space. Uh, if you know anyone who knows how to create big bubbles, uh, we need someone to make big bubbles. We need people to do all kinds of things, probably need one or two gophers or runners among the, the group in the Grove as well. So pretty much anything and if you're not sure and you want to help that none of that sounds right, come and talk to me because something else will be right. <laughs> talk drawing, if you could do talk drawing, we'd love to hear about it. Margaret's in charge of pastoral area. She would like some chaplains, some people to chat to people, to welcome people, um, uh, to care for people. Prayers, Fifi's looking after prayers. Uh, and you can pray at home. You can pray at home. Uh, there's just so many different areas that you can get involved in. Um, but it's a chance for us to truly love the community and create and establish his kingdom in this place. Uh, I think Jen's got a computer. I've got a computer here. We can sign you up today and have a look at all the things. They're, they're growing all the time. We'll go home, look on your website, look on the website, Stable on Strand, get involved and you can see all the things. Maybe you think, well, we can help with finances. That's great. If you want to help with finances, we would love that. We've got a video here to show you. We've just had that. Well, this is our 20th year, so it's our 20th birthday. So for our big party that we had a couple of weeks ago, we wrote to some people and asked them to send us some greetings. To my many, many friends in Townsville. Townsville is a city with tremendous heart. I love coming to Townsville, so does Jen. Um, we love coming to Townsville. It's an outward looking city where service to country and others sits at its, at its core. And the tradition of Stable on the Strand is a wonderful part of Townsville. For 20 years, you've been bringing the spirit of Christmas to life. The Christmas story of a light coming into the world, of a star rising in the darkness, and of God found as a child in a manger amongst us. Thank you to the combined churches of Townsville, to the volunteers and the sponsors inspired by the child of Bethlehem. You bring a gift of love and hope each and every year the hands and feet of Christ himself. I know the work you do. Long may stable on the strand continue and may God bless you all. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to have his blessing. Oh, that is wonderful. Let's pray. Father, um, you're amazing. You're amazing. That For 20 years you have set in this city this amazing event that tells the story of Jesus. And it's amazing that we can be part of this. We can be part of building your kingdom in this place. We can be part of loving our community, of embracing them with arms of love. We can be part of just bringing joy and hope into people's lives. And Lord, help us to be the Peters and just to jump out of the boat and to go for it and just to know that when we start looking at all those problems that you will catch us, you will lift us up and you will plant our feet very strongly on a place where we can walk and where, can, where we can serve. I thank you for this church and I thank you for the people in this church and uh, I thank you for their incredible faithfulness over many, many years. And I pray that you will just place on the hearts of each person here the role that they're to take, the part that they can take, or, or that they'll talk to people and hear, I'd just do, like to do that. Oh, I would just like to do that little bit. And every little bit's like this big jigsaw God that you bring together. So we thank you, Lord. We bless you. Um, we thank you for Stable. We thank you for the lives that have been changed and transformed um, through the power of your spirit operating through Stable. And we uh, bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen. So jump out of the boat. We'd love to talk to you. Come along Wednesday night if you want to know more. All, a lot of the leaders will be there and you can just find. Think about what your gift is. Come and talk to me about your gift and I'll tell you where it fits in. And we'd love, 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 love to have you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Why don't we stand together right now? We're going to pray for Stable. We're going to pray for Pastor Anne too. We're going to pray for you. 
Never say, I can't do anything. Have you ever been tempted to say that? Have you ever said that? What could I possibly do? Loads of things. Might not always do them right. But oh boy, you're going to leave your mark. Isn't that wonderful? Let's sing that song, He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. Everybody. He is risen from the dead. And He is Lord. Every knee. Every tongue. That I wonder if you can see in your mind's eye the glory of God coming across that riverside area. Riverway being opened up by the Spirit of God. Thousands, tens of thousands coming to hear the message of gospel, the message of good news, the message of Jesus. The message of the coming of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, look up at his seat. Let's lift our hands and worship the Lord. Let's, where you are, start praying. Oh, God bless Townsville. Oh, God bless this city. Lord, bless the church of Jesus in Townsville. Bless every believer. Bless those that are caught up with themselves and feel that they've got nothing to give. Lord, call them out of their gloom. Bring life, I pray, in Jesus' name. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless Pastor Anne. Oh, God. Bless Pastor Fifi and Lapani and, and all the different workers and leaders. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Enter in right now. Start praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Open your mouth. Show forth his praise. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. We want to see this city saved. We want to see this city brought to Christ. We want the love of God shed abroad in all of our hearts by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from.
Don't forget to pray for the Bible study on Wednesday night. As we're all over at River, uh, no, at the Salvation Army and enjoying the fact that uh, Stable has come to Riverway, the Bible study will be live streamed. Well, it won't be exactly live streamed, but it will be alive. And uh, the theme, as you know, will be how to combat, how to minister to those that are caught up in depression, the cloud of despair and despond can be eradicated. Hallelujah. You can overcome. You can overcome. We're called to be overcomers. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Don't be afraid to praise God in his house. Hallelujah. And next Sunday morning, I'll be sharing the word of God, what made the apostle cry. Oh, hallelujah. What made the apostle Paul cry? You thought he was invincible. You thought that he was a man that was so strong that he even could have been regarded as being hard, but he had a tender heart. What moved him to tears? Hallelujah. Oh, let's believe for great things in the local fellowship. Amen. Begin to believe for great things in the city. Hallelujah. Take your gifts, take your talents and invest them in the kingdom of God. Praise God from whom Everyone. Amen. Let's have a cup of tea.